Joe's Show coming in July. Woohoo! How awesome is that? We're back on track again. I love it. Either way, we just got back from the special charity screening for Independence Day double feature. We got to see the original double. <laughs> we got to see the original Independence Day, and we also got to see the new Independence Day resurgence right afterwards. It was great. Got this awesome lanyard. That's awesome as hell. Awesome as hell. And uh, the movie, I gotta say, it was spectacular. Takes place 20 years after the original Independence Day. And they even make it known. 1996, more than once in the film and stuff like that. Like, when jo Jeff Goldblum's talking about his, uh, him and Will Smith, what they did in... Mm, you know, in 1996. Uh, what happened in 1996? The, the Madam President, played by Celia Ward, does a fantastic job, by the way. Mm, Celia Ward, bravo. And Bill Pullman being back in it. Judd Hirsch, it was beautiful. The story had excellent timing on it and stuff. Great action, great setup for romance and stuff like that in it. The... The love between the president's, um, President Whitmore's daughter and uh, Liam Hensworth, which is Jake, by the way, was fantastic. I loved the setup between them. And I loved how Will Smith's uh, son, which was Vivica A. Fox's little boy, in the first Independence Day, followed in his dad's footsteps and became a pilot just like him. Okay, and... Liam Hensworth apparently did something wrong during test flight they were on and stuff and made him crash. Well, it, he still had a grudge, uh, like, mentality on it and stuff, and he gave him a good suck to the jaw when he saw him again. It's like, oh, <laughs> burn! Yeah, oh, burn. That's terrible. Either way, <laughs> the film was spectacular. I loved every moment of it. And the Alien Queen, for God's sake, the first time you see the Alien Queen, she is motherfucking Transformer size! Holy shit! You never expected this! I mean, seriously! She When she breaks out of her freaking ship and shit and she's coming after Area 51 on foot? Motherfucking Transformer size! Optimus Prime could take her on, for God's sake! I was like, holy shit! <laughs> it was like, unbelievable! The story, the action, the suspense, all of it was great. And for the first time ever, you got to learn that inside of the mothership itself, there was more to it than, yes, what you saw in Independence Day, the mothership and stuff. This was the Queen's mothership, and mother, holy shit, this thing had its own water system, eco-like system and shit. When, they, when uh, Liam Hensworth and them crash-landed in there and shit, after they were ambushed, they were fucking running around on foot, hiding in the water and everything, and it was like, holy shit, you never expected that kind of thing to happen. It was unbelievable. I enjoyed the story very much. The movie was great. It had some backstory to it concerning what happened 20 years ago and stuff like that. By the way, in 1996, here's a fun fact, I was only 18 years old. 18 going on 19, or I was around 19 years old, because it was the year before I graduated high school, when Independence Day first came out. Now, like the first one, Fox kept this movie a big mother secret until this year, during the Super Bowl, okay? They kept this mother thing under wraps like no tomorrow. There was no, oh, we're going to show this piece. Ruin the movie a bit. No, 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 no. That's why I didn't even know what the hell the whole movie was really about and stuff. I actually watched the trailer that they showed for, you know, the final trailer and stuff. And I was like, I gotta see this. I have to see this movie. Now, spoiler alert for those of you who haven't seen it yet. I'm gonna tell you right now. Dr. Oaken is revealed to be gay. Brent Spiner is revealed to be gay. I did not know this in the original Independence Day. They never even touched on that subject. Okay? And I did not even know this stuff. Okay? But it doesn't affect me. I actually liked his character. He was always great. Uh, 
uh, in the goofy kind of way, like, uh, you know, they don't let us out of Area 51 much, you know, <laughs> that kind of deal. Uh, it apparently, he did not die in the first Independence Day like everyone thought he did and stuff. He went into a coma. But here's the real kicker to everything. Bill Pullman, Brent Spiner, and then this new guy, um, big Wakanda looking guy. I meant seriously, big African soldier guy and stuff. Okay, he was actually a prince, and, a prince who became a, reg, a revolutionary fighter kind of guy and stuff. Okay. He, they all three touched on those alien th objects and were able to hear when the queen was coming. I meant their heads literally almost split wide open just from this crap. And mm, Bill Pullman apparently went nuts afterwards and stuff. Because even though they defeated everything in the original Independence Day in 1996, Bill Pullman went nuts. I meant he was drawing circles all the time and all this other shit. And they had him on medication and all that kind of crap. Now, one thing, I'll tell you one thing right now. that uh, Compared to Independence Day to Independence Day Resurgence, Independence Day, we saw a lot more. Okay? And I mean a lot more than meets the eye. Including the aliens themselves. We saw these motherfuckers walking around in freaking shooting everybody and crap. They were like motherfucking soldiers. And then we also saw the whole unbelievable. You know, we also got to see mm, not only uh, that, but we got to see more differences in the alien ships as well, such as the fighter craft. Holy crap. It was like the freaking ship from Battlestar Galactica, for God's sake. You know, in the, the first one, it was more of a, like a round, kind of crescent moon kind of deal. These were coming out flying like, like this kind of shit. In this shape, like this, you know, like, and it was just like Battlestar Galactica Cylon bullshit. I was like, holy crap. It was unbelievable. And I'll tell you one thing right now. Independence Day Resurgence leaves on a cliffhanger. I'm at a serious cliffhanger. It's letting you know there will be one more movie. Because they meet this... Uh, by the way, like I said, spoiler alert. If you have not seen the film, don't watch my review. If you've already seen it, leave your thoughts in the comments after we're done. Either way, there's this sphere-like thing, okay? You know how in Destiny there was the Traveler, okay? It came there to Earth... It freaking protected the protected us as much as it could and stuff, and it was slowly dying. Well, this thing showed up to warn us the alien queen was coming, okay? And we blasted it. It was like, whoops! <laughs> when we find out from Dr. Oaken that this thing is alive and stuff like that, and it's our ally, it came there to warn us. It's also responsible, like I said, like the Traveler from Destiny, that it's also responsible for taking care of a world where p species from other planets, like uh, alien races from other planets and stuff like that, took refuge there. It helped them design weapons to fight these aliens and their queen and all that crap. And it was coming to Earth to do the same for us. Well, it turns out we attacked it with the very weapons we took from the aliens that attacked us. And it was like, whoops. There was a big whoops in all that. And I mean, a big whoops. Because the minute the alien queen shows up along with her little arm, her huge freaking armada, it was just like, yeah, we're doomed. We're really doomed. And... Some elements were changed in this that, you know, that were a little different. Yes, it's 20 years later, but at the same time, it could explain a little more. For one, you see a portrait in the White House of Will Smith. Seriously, a portrait in the White House of Will Smith from, in his uh, fighter, jet fighters, uni marine fighter jet uniform, or whatever you want to call it, okay? And mm, we're all like, what the hell? Okay, why is his portrait up there and stuff? 
And then you br it brings about talking about how his son, you know, is following in his footsteps and stuff. And it brings up about how his dad died during the first um, space flight. Okay? Trying to go to the moon to build a space station and all that crap. His dad died during that flight and it, when it crashed, landed and crap. Nobody knew this. Okay? Then, there were some elements that were also left out. Like, for instance, Jeff Goldblum, um, where was his wife? His ex-wife at the time in the first Independence Day, but they were getting back together and everything. Where was she? What happened to her? Because now he was getting involved with this new woman and stuff. You know, where's Connie? What happened to Connie? No, no, nothing saying about what happened to Connie. Okay? There were so many, some certain elements left out of it that would have made the backstory a little better. Like, for instance, Vivica A. Fox was an exotic dancer in the first movie. Okay, in this one, she's a doctor. She's a motherfucking doctor. Wow. Now, it turns out the hospital she was working at was named after the dead president's wife. You know, the, the white, uh, the white, uh, Get it right here. Whitmore's wife's name was on the hospital because, you know, she died in the first Independence Day and stuff like that. They named the hospital after her. See, civilization rebuilt itself. And that's the other thing, too. There were no separate freaking nations at war anymore. Literally with each other. There were no separate nations at war with each other anymore. There was... One nation, one one council, one world council, made up of each of the presidents of each country. Okay, including Celia Ward as our president of the United States. Okay, they were the world council, and they were in charge of making the decisions together. That means Chinese, a Chinese, Japanese. Afghanistan, Iraqi, whatever. They were all working together. Like, world peace got achieved after Independence Day, okay? 20 years of rebuilding everything, and it, they just decide, put the petty bullshit aside. We defeated these aliens together and stuff. We need to continue working together. I love that. I wish our real-life world would come to that decision. Seriously. That would be the best thing in the world for everything. Okay, but we're talking about the film. Either way, that's what it was going on and stuff. And it turns out how Celia Ward gets killed in it is that mm, she is in the bunker, okay, mm, this nuclear bunker that they, mm, they use as a place to hide the president and stuff. And mm, the aliens attack the damn place. I meant literally break in, fucking shooting everyone to death. Okay? And it was like, holy shit! What the hell? And then William Thatcher there gets named into being the president. Uh, Robert Loja was in one scene for this whole film. And I guess that had to be done before he, I guess he passed away recently or something? Either way, uh, he was in one scene for this film, and he looked like he really hadn't changed all that much. He got They made him look older looking and everything, but still, he was only in that one scene and everything. And they built this gigantic wall, which is so funny. Russell Case's name is the focus on the wall first. Then it spreads out and shows all these other names on the wall and stuff. It was a memorial wall that they built with all the people that they lost during the first Independence Day film and stuff. And I was just like, wow. Unbelievable. That is unbelievable. Now, I gotta tell you right now, my final judgment on this film is going to be an 8 out of 10. As much as I loved the film, it left a lot of things unexplained. And the cliffhanger already sets it up for a third movie because basically the sphere tells them that you defeated one alien queen, there's still five more out there. Okay? There and mm, Jeff Goldblum says to Dr. Oaken there, Brent Spiner, he says, 
So what does this mean? And he says two words, two words, interstellar travel. And that tells you right there. And Liam Hensworth goes, take the fight to them. Exactly. <laughs> and it, I love how it ended with Dr. Oaken saying, you're going to kick some alien ass. <laughs> it was beautiful. It was a great way to end the film. It leaves it on a cliffhanger basically telling you, hey, we got one more movie in the works because originally when Independence Day was made, they said it was going to be a trilogy. Now, it took this long, 20 years for the, this second film to come out. How much longer do you think we're going to have to wait for the third installment? Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Well, anyways, my final judgment on Independence Day Resurgence is 8 out of 10. Reasons why is mostly because there's no explanation what happened to Connie. Okay, what happened to Connie Levinson? Okay, what happened to certain other characters that were in the original film that we know survived? Like, what happened to Russell Case's kids? No, there's no mention of them either. Okay, what happened to all those people and stuff? You never hear one mention about them all. Okay, and... I'm giving it two thumbs up. I loved it. Independence Day Resurgence brought back that nostalgia I had and that feel good, that feel goodness kind of deal when I saw the original Independence Day in 1996. I was like, Whew! and getting to see it again tonight was just beautiful. I, 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 I actually almost started to cry, you know, especially the sad parts again and stuff like that. But when it was like the action and stuff, I was just like feeling like that teenage boy sitting in that seat, theater seat with my best buds and stuff around me. And watching it together like we did, it was fantastic. What a night. Woo! And also, um, recommendations. High recommendations. Go check it out for yourselves. I loved it. I'm sure you're going to love it too. You're probably going to hear from other critics saying about how bad it was or some uh, Don't listen to them. Okay? Make your own judgments on this. If you, Like I said, if you have not seen the film, do not watch any of this review. Okay? But if you have seen the film, let's discuss our thoughts down in the comments section. Did you like it? Did you think it was okay? What was your favorite part of the film? What did you love most about it? I... I loved the action most of all. I meant, God help me, the action was spectacular. And it had its funniest moments in it. I meant, some very funny moments. And it made you want to laugh at them. It didn't make you cringe or anything like that. Like saying, oh, that was kind of bad, you know. No, there were people in the theater laughing at them and stuff. They loved that stuff. It was great. And I loved it too. Either way, Final Judgment, my adventurous ones, is none other than 8 out of 10. Two thumbs up. High recommendations. Check it out for yourselves. If you want to see it right now in theaters, go. Go. Pick up that damn, your damn car keys and go. <laughs> I'm sure wherever it's, you know, whatever state you're in, <laughs> there's a movie theater open still. <laughs> Either way. We had a great time, once again, and uh, for the charity thing, it was concerning um, the children's um, feeding, uh, feeding hungry America, um, uh, no kid go hungry thing, okay, it was a charity event thing where uh, you, the ticket price you paid for the, the double feature was $15, okay, you got to, that money is going to this uh, Feed America thing, I loved it. I love taking part in these charity things. When it comes to yours truly, The Adventurous Joe, and The Adventurous Joe Show, returning soon, we're going to be doing a lot more like that and stuff. We like participating in those things, and we like helping out our community, or helping out our friends and family and stuff like that, you know, around us that you never know who actually needs the help more than you do. Okay, so that's actually a good thing. Either way, my adventurous ones, that's it. We are done with this week's movie review. I will see you all next time on the next movie review when I will review the fan film everyone's been talking about. The Fall of Grayskull. Holy crap, it's got momentum to it. <laughs> I still haven't finished watching it. 
I kind of fell asleep during it once and uh, missed half the movie. So either way, I got to watch it all the way through this time. Make sure to write down my thoughts on it and everything. And I will have my full review for you next week on the next movie review. Until then, my adventurous ones, get out there, see Independence Day Resurgence. If you've already seen it, leave your thoughts down in the comment section down below. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. Also, you can follow me, you can also friend me on my you know, um, Xbox Live. And PSN, both are, uh, user IDs are down in the description if you want to play some games together. And don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel. God knows we need the subscribers. <laughs> and leave your comments. But inappropriate ones will not be tolerated, so don't even think about it. It's an automatic leaving, take away your comment and banishment from this channel. Either way. That's it. I will see you all next time on the next movie review. Until then, peace out, and may the force be with you all. Later.